The following video is about Ubuntu Mate. Most English speaking people will pronounce M A T E as mate. However, when referring to the Mate desktop, the correct pronunciation is Mate. If you don't want to take my word for it, please be sure to read the note from Ubuntu Mate head developer Martin Wimpress, which is on your screen. Thank you. Now that we have that cleared up, greetings and salutations, and thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're going to take a quick look at the Ubuntu Mate desktop, and it is not the first time we have looked at Ubuntu Mate, so this is really just a quick update to let you guys know that yes, I have hopped distros yet again. The last video I posted, I was running Linux Mint 17.3. Not a thing wrong with Linux Mint 17.3, it was doing just fine. But I decided, since everybody was telling me how wonderful the Ubuntu Mate experience has been for them, that I would give that another whirl. Now this is a distribution that on this channel we have talked about a lot, and this was one of my daily drivers for a long long time and I only got rid of it because something got screwed up with it and I put Linux Mint on the system and then I switched over to Ubuntu with the Unity desktop because I'd been bad mouthing it and people said hey you need to try it so I did it so I put that on there I ran that for about a month I had some issues there and I talked about that in the last video that I posted. And I've pretty much tried every major Linux distribution and most of the major desktops within the last six months. I'm always playing around with this. And I decided that it would be fun to come back to the simplicity of Ubuntu Mate. So this is how I have this set up. I am using the old GNOME 2 Mate menu here. Uh, those of you who are hip to what Mate is, it's a fork of the old GNOME 2 desktop, and if you've been around Linux for a long, long time like I have, like more than 10 years, then you will probably have very fond memories of GNOME 2. The Mate folks took it upon themselves to fork GNOME 2 when the GNOME project went to GNOME 3 in 2011. And as far as GNOME 3 is concerned, I don't knock it. If it's the, if that's your cup of tea, that's fine. I've just never been able to get really cuddly and warm with GNOME 3. I've tried it on several occasions and there's always been some reason that will push me on to something else. In past videos that I have done talking about Ubuntu Mate, you may have noticed that I had used the advanced menu and I decided this time around to eschew that entirely and stick with the list. It's just a matter of adjusting my workflow so we'll see how long I can keep that up. Uh, I'm used to hitting the super key or the windows key whatever you want to call that key on the keyboard and then starting to type i've gotten into that habit using cinnamon unity and desktops like that however to tell you the truth probably takes me just about as long to open a menu and find the application so if i want virtual box for instance i know that's an accessories and i just go boom and now it's on the screen so we're going to try it the old school way for a while there and yes you can ignore that no we're not going to be talking about virtual box I just happened to open that up. So I have some icons here and then I have also an application switcher installed and it's all on one panel. Now when you first install this you get two panels, one on the top, one on the bottom. I like to have just one single panel up top and then there's a bunch of icons over here. I also decided that I would enable Compiz because that helps with some screen tearing issues I have. This particular computer has a really old AMD graphics card in it. I do not have proprietary drivers available for it, and even when I did, they were awful. And so if you can run Compiz, then that seems to help that issue, and everything seems to work fine with the new open source drivers. But if you run like Marco compositing or something like that, then I've noticed that I get screen tearing. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to have Compiz. Compiz gives me some really nice features, like a very nice desktop switcher here that comes up that's cool with me and I'm using the stock Ubuntu Mate Compiz settings I'll show you how to get to that in just a second but one of the things that was set up is the zoom those of you who have watched my videos for years know that I used to do this all the time I used to use the zoom but on GNOME 3 based desktops like Unity and Cinnamon and also GNOME 3 proper the zoom feature doesn't work very well, never has. It works great in Mate now. It's wonderful. I can zoom right in and it'll follow the cursor and all that stuff. So I was able to set that up. 
So that's what I'm using now. Another thing that I'm getting used to again is the drop down terminal and the drop down terminal is awesome for doing uh, things like just logging into other machines and seeing what's going on here. As you can see, I am logged into another machine on the network. So I can just check that machine out and make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. So there is uh, what its processor is doing and I can restart it and shut it down. I can also grab files from that other machine and send them across the network. I've gotten very much into my workflow with using SSH to get into machines on my network. So I'm getting used to tilde again. I had uh, for the longest time gotten in the habit of using alternate control and T to open a terminal. I can still do that here and open up the Mate terminal, but the folks at Ubuntu Mate are kind enough to incorporate this nifty little application called tilde and that's in the startup. You can disable that if you want to. As a matter of fact, that's what I want to show you next, right after I show you another reason that I wanted to get back to Mate, and that is the lovely Kaha file manager that is spelled C-A-J-A, and I have myself mispronounced that and called it Kaja in the past, but the correct, correct pronunciation is Kaha. It's based on the Spanish language. So one of the things that I like about this, it's lightweight, first of all, it has less settings than any of the, uh, you know, like uh, the other heavier managers, but it has this feature, which they have decided for whatever reason in Nautilus, which you get with GNOME 3 and Unity and many other desktops to sunset in favor of tabs. This is not the same thing as opening tabs, folks. This is two separate windows and you can give it two separate locations and you can see everything that's going on on the screen at the same time and you can just drag and drop stuff back and forth if you want to. So that is a feature that I have gotten very used to using and so I wanted that back. Okay, and other than that I really didn't do much to the system. I've kept it very simple. A single panel up at the top and I did enable the weather here because I just like that. So if I hover over that it tells me what's going on with that. And a couple of things I wanted to show guy, people, you guys who are new to the channel, new to Mate, haven't seen all the videos that I have uh, posted. You get a lot of control over this desktop. So a whirlwind here, if we look at uh, just appearance, which we'll take a look at right now, you can change your theme, you can download more themes, you can do all kinds of really cool stuff here. I'm just using Ambient Mate because that's the one that I like. Or Mate, excuse me. Sorry, Martin, don't hit me. Don't send anybody to yell at me. See, I even make that mistake every now and again too. Uh, anyway, you can choose backgrounds here. Got a bunch of backgrounds installed and ready to rock and roll. And you can, of course, add stuff from your pictures. You can set your DPI if you have a high DPI display. Just click on details there and under fonts and then you can type in whatever you want and that will change your DPI or you can customize each font individually. It gives you a lot of control and another thing that is nice is that it gives you a bunch of control over what you want started when your computer boots up. Like for instance, I'm not using the backup tool. I don't need this uh, stuff here. I don't need Bluetooth. This machine doesn't even have a Bluetooth on it. So I was able to go through here and turn a lot of this stuff off and not have it come up. I don't want the update manager. I don't need NVIDIA. So that's very cool about the Mate desktop. We've got QT settings. If you run a lot of QT based apps, that's nice to have. And then of course, another thing that I've always liked about the Ubuntu Mate distribution is Mate Tweak which is a tool that lets you set what you see on your desktop. Now you may be saying, well, Joe, it's only set to show home and mounted volumes. What's that? That's a link, ladies and gentlemen, to another file system called work there. And then here you can select your interface in past videos. I've shown you what they all look like. I'm not going to do that this time around. This is a quickie and you can change things like running the advanced menu and the advanced indicator applets, but we're trying to keep things light and lean here. And then here's where you can change your window manager and we are running Compiz. So it gives you a lot of control. Mate Tweak is available in other implementations of the Mate desktop, but it may or may not give you all those really cool features. Some of these are specific to Ubuntu Mate. And of course, one of the greatest things about Ubuntu Mate that I always like to talk about every time I get the chance is the lovely welcome screen. This is set to come up when you first install the distribution 
and it gives you the ability to completely configure your system without ever having to open a terminal. So it's nice for new users or lazy users like me because when I install this system, I just clicked my way through and just start over here and then follow the bouncing ball. Update your software. You can install your additional codecs here. And yes, you do need to remove the Fluendo codec. I will show you that at the end of the video. This is an official flavor of Ubuntu, which means that Fluendo is included. And then we have the additional screen here. If we just skip ahead, it takes us to drivers. We can get drivers installed. Here is the software for uh, different Wi-Fi drivers. You can just throw that on the system and there you go. You can just work your way around the welcome menu. And if we go back to the front screen here, we go to software. This introduces us to another wonderful little application and this is the software boutique. The software boutique does not list every piece of software available for Ubuntu Mate, but it does try to list the most popular software and so, for instance, if you want to install a third-party application like Spotify, for instance, you can scan through here and you can find that there it is, one click to install. Usually to install Spotify on Ubuntu, you have to use several terminal commands to do that, but they simplify the process. Um, just to let you guys know at Ubuntu Mate, the link here for Ocean Audio is broken. You need to check that out. I had to go do that manually. This works, I'd say, 99% of the time, but every now and again, when you're dealing with a third-party application, for some reason or another, it might not install from here, and you'll have to go to the third-party provider's site and then follow their directions to install, but uh, this can certainly save you lots and lots of time. So that is a whirlwind tour of the Mate desktop. And I just had to take the opportunity to say something nice about it. It is one of my favorite distributions of Linux. When it first came along, the 1604 had some bugs in it. It was not the Mate developers' problems. It was Ubuntu's problems. And as you recall, when I was talking about using Ubuntu's Unity desktop, I was having several issues with audio. I was having issues with the network manager. I was having uh, some other small things that were going wrong with the system. I don't have that problem here with the Mate desktop, and so far so good. Nothing has shown itself up. Now, before I wind down this video, simply because I get questions about this every time that I say something about Ubuntu, I'm going to show you something. There's a package in here that if you have an MP3 music collection, if you leave it in here, it will affect the sound of your MP3s. So you'll need a tool like the Synaptic Package Manager installed so you can go find the package and get rid of it. Or you can do it from a terminal if you are fluent with doing that. But the name of the package, just search for the word Fluendo. Fluendo is a company that provides MP3 codecs to Ubuntu. And the deal is, is that way Ubuntu can just legally distribute MP3 codecs because you can go to the Fluendo site and then you can purchase said codecs. What they do is they put this package into your system when you install MP3 codecs, uh, either using the codecs package that, uh, you know, the tick that you uh, tick when you first install Ubuntu, or you in Ubuntu Mate, you can do it from the welcome screen. Either way, what you end up with here is this little package. And all this does is make your MP3 sound like crap. And this encourages you to go spend 30 something dollars to buy Fluendo's Codex. You do not have to do that. All you have to do is find this package and mark it for complete removal. Get rid of it. Now, what the system will do is it will default back to regular GStreamer, and on GStreamer, everything should sound just fine. Now, if you want to purchase the Fluendo Codex, you can go right ahead. I'm just saying that you don't have to. And every time I mention that, people ask me about that. So I wanted to throw that in this video. Check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Also, if you would, please give Freedom Penguin a look as well. There are lots of great stories up there about Linux from contributors such as myself. And that's run by Matt Hartley. And you definitely want to check out freedompenguin.com. Uh, lots of cool things happening over there. And that's it for me for now. This was just a quick update video. Just wanted to show you guys around the Mate desktop. Feels like coming home. I haven't used this in a while. 
Uh, and the only reason I changed it was because there was uh, something wrong in the system. I uh, Something got gornied up, and I decided instead of troubleshooting it, just to reload it. So this machine has been running other distribu uh, distributions for a while, but now we're back on Mate and probably stay here for a while. But you know how I am. I change distros about as often as I change underwear. However, I've got all those hard drives now, remember? I told you about that in the last video. So now I can do all kinds of crazy dual triple boots and things like that. Thanks for watching, gang. Talk to you again soon. And if you want to learn more about Mate, check out my older videos posted. I've got videos where I install it. Check out videos where I tweak the desktop. Lots of cool stuff already up on the channel.